So, if you're wondering what this large glowing table is over here, you will need to worry no more, because I'm going to tell you. It's Talkioki. It's a pop-up talk show where you can talk about whatever you want to talk about. In fact, what we're doing right now is just talkioki an ordinary conversation um, by doing it through a microphone. And, you know, somehow that makes a difference. I don't know why. Anyway, my name's Mikey. Let's find out who we've got around the edge of the table. What's the name? Rowan. Rowan and... I'm George. George, welcome. And does anyone else want to come and sit? Come and sit down. Have a try of this. Okay. Try it out. What's your name? Pat. Pat, welcome. Um, I'm Mikey. Um, has anyone got anything they want to get the ball rolling with? Any thoughts, comments, suggestions, observations, ideas? Interjections? <laughs> I thought the conversation we were just starting a few minutes ago was quite interesting. About that? It, was, it was kind of about how um, yeah. uh, you know, we, we've become complacent with technology and we've been clicking agree to every piece of software we've been installing for decades now, not realising that that's slowly given so many companies our information and they're allowed to do whatever the hell they want with it and, and can trace us and track us and who so knows what we've else. Sign their life away. A little bit. But yeah. the, the weird thing is, I think people are very scared of that. I'm, I'm just, I'm not that fast. Yeah. Maybe it's just because we're, we're like lucky and privileged that in the UK that we don't really have our freedoms, uh, you know, suppressed So you're suppressed happy to yet. Sign, your, sign your life away? I mean, I, let me let me just say, I haven't worried about it yet, and nothing bad has directly happened to me yet because of it. Okay, George. I think the key, you raise the finger. I think the key word Oops. there is yet. Um, yeah. I mean, this, yeah. so this is the advent of se of what you call surveillance capitalism, um, yeah. where. And I was just saying, it yeah. blows my mind how people still haven't clocked how Google and Facebook companies offering what are essentially, yeah. on the surface, free services yeah. are generating billions of dollars of wealth. Yeah. And it still blows my mind that people don't know how that is. Which so where's, is yeah, where's the money so coming basically from? Track, they're basically storing all our information and using it to generate behavioral patterns, behavioral models of how yeah. we are online. And there are lots of companies that track you online and you don't even know about. Uh, and they're using all of this to generate revenue, but that means that there are hundreds of what you call digital doppelgangers of all of us um, being traded on the internet. A digital for, for doppelganger. Money. People are trading our digital doppelgangers. Did you know this? Um, we've got Rowan, we've got George, we've got Pat. What's your name? Katrina. And Toby. Toby. Toby, yeah. Toby. Um, Sweet Toby. And I'm Mikey. Uh, what's that? Sweet Toby to you. Okay. <laughs> Sweet Toby. Well, it's up to you. You can be who you can be whoever you want to be, Toby. You can be Tony. You can be Sweet Toby. Whatever you want to be. What do you want to be? Toby's fine. Toby. Toby. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Rowan. Uh, so we're talking about digital doppelgangers being traded on international markets. Facebook, Google, billionaire companies farming us uh, uh, when we're we're lapping up the free service. That's what we're talking about at Tokyoki. Any any thoughts on this side, Pat? I think the, yeah. the internet's a weird one because yep. there's a. I don't know if you've heard of like a Marxist philosopher called Slavoj Žižek before, but he always talks I about have, how the yes. internet is a double-edged sword because on the yeah. one hand it's very capitalist, but it's also quite anti-capitalist in the sense that it makes intellectual commodities free. Right. And how actually, if you think about industries like the music industry, yeah. even though the internet was originally an instrument of the free market, it's actually ended up destroying a lot of. Yeah. a lot of industries so it, it's a strange one I think and yeah. I kind of feel like the internet is such a kind of like complex and uncontrollable thing that it's just got a mind of its own and it can't yeah. be controlled by anyone well okay but, but that could be me speaking naively though yeah okay so it's too woolly and decentralized to be kind of I would, yeah I would, not necessarily okay yeah. I would kind of disagree with that in a sense like, I know what you what you mean but I think part of it is that um, we've uh, we've become sort of uh, feel like we have an ownership over these spaces like Twitter and Facebook yeah. when these are spaces owned by private in private companies these are private spaces it's almost like in cities the proliferation of what you call pseudo public space so like bits of London that you're not allowed to go and sleep yeah. on a park yeah. bench because it's owned by a private company or yeah. something so some guy will turn up and move along any any homeless people or something like that um, so it's almost like it, it's uh, it's to these companies' benefit to make out that we can do whatever we want in their platform, but yeah. actually we can't. Yeah. So it's like people who talk about censorship. People talk about sen like Twitter censoring them. It's like, well, censorship is when the government does it, or censorship is when the government puts you in jail for what you say. But online, like it can't, it can't. So really I mean, be that. how does Twitter censor 
but whole it could like it could shut down Donald Trump's account, for instance, if yeah. it wanted to. Right. But okay. that's not censorship because it's not the same thing. But okay. the, the so so, so they've got a right in a way to promote whatever tweets they want. Whatever to they want, and they're protected under their First Amendment rights as a company in right. the in, under U.S. law to do that. But following on from what Toby was saying, I think. Um, the, the really the people who have the power are the people who own these digital spaces and where the servers yeah. are stored yeah. is also an important consideration so yeah. there are these it's the it's the, the infrastructure behind the um, the digital space that we're not that's deliberately yeah. occluded yeah that I think we need to educate so ourselves it looks like a public space but it's a pseudo public space well I think as well I mean the whole of the digital arena Arena. It's it's an outsourcing of people's intellect. Right. So to be honest, sometimes they you can see what they present to you, and sometimes it's quite a simple form. You know, I've I've read stuff on the internet, and they say oh everything's on the internet, but it's not really. It's quite hard to find like quite in depth. Right. You know, so there's material. a kind of superficial it's skin. Almost a, a, yeah, dumbing but, down a, yeah. of, of um, intellect yeah. sort uh, intellectual property that's kind of. It's almost like giving you sound bites of it, but not any depth. Okay. That's what I felt as well. Okay. About, um, Interesting. Superficial space. Yeah. Right. Pseudo public. I, I agree. Cause like uh, when when you Google searching for something, just uh, like uh, products are a great example. I want a review of some product. And I type in the name of the product, and it's a thousand shops with links to buy it before finding some objective review of this thing, and that really bugs me. But I, I and I kind of. I, I might sit somewhere between you two, I think, um, because I kind of feel like it has the, pos the the internet has the capacity to be this kind of Marxist, anti-neoliberal machine, but I don't think it is. I think it is more like what George was saying, but I feel like things are changing a little bit. Yeah, space. you wish it was, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, could we make it into something like that? Is it possible? Yeah, it may be. Could it? Okay, Katrina? Have you read, um, So You've Been Publicly Shamed by John Ronson? No. Okay, so John Ronson, the journalist, wrote a book about public shaming, and the book starts with a bot being made of him. Somebody made a bot yeah. using his name, stole his identity, yeah. and he couldn't shut it down because they were allowed to. Yeah. They Is essentially started saying things about him that people started to believe, like, oh, making a salad. <laughs> and like just saying like things that he wasn't doing. Was he particularly upset that the bot he, he was really claimed upset. to be making a salad? And it's just these rich businessmen and he met up yeah. with them and it's actually on YouTube, the interview that he has with them. It's really uncomfortable to watch because they think it's their right to okay. own, own So his that is a kind of digital doppelganger as, as what... Um, but I mean, how would you feel if someone made a digital doppelganger of you in a, in a public way? I mean, this is slightly different from, I think, what George was talking about. I feel about. quite cheated. Cheated. If, like, like in that public, in that Twitter account, they were saying things about his sexuality that wasn't true and people just believed it. And, right. You know, his biography was describing him, so it was very believable. Well, not if you yeah. know him, but... Uh, do you know about this? You've been yeah, I mean, there's... So, uh, uh, again, Toby mentioned Slavoj Žižek before. Yeah. If we're going into the philosophy arm... Yeah. Um, there are arguments that because these they can cha they they have all this information about your behaviour and they can like make it look like you they can make it seem like you um, that this is part of the self this is yeah. like in in the philosophical definition of what the self is um, this is if you if they can predict our behaviour then they have elements of what makes us us. So in a way, it is us to a certain extent. These digital doppelgangers, arguably, I yeah. would say from a philosophical perspective, are part of the self, so they should be protected like right. the body is because in legislation, but obviously the legislation can't catch up with it because it moves right. so fast. But yeah. before, the self was limited to kind of more within the body, wasn't it? Yeah, I and mean... What we say and what we think was limited more to the, the body, whereas now it's not, and if it can be stored or, or, and archived on the internet and these um, maps of our behaviour made, I would argue that's part of the self. Yeah, I mean, what, it does ask the question, what is the self, where does it begin and end, if, we are, if it's online as well? And yet Facebook shut down people who they say have accounts like fake, with fake names on, so they're quite happy to almost appropriate parts of your personality but if you wish to appropriate parts of your own personality and 
put out a different account under a, under a different name, right. then they actually shut that down because obviously yeah. that, that person is not going to bring them any revenue because yeah. they're not real. But what about if you're making a fictional self that actually coincidentally I've is got, somebody I've got else? I've a fictional self on the internet. I don't, I don't appear as myself on the internet. How, Only do to know, an how do you know that that's, some, that's not somebody else already? I know. <laughs> Something weird happened to me on Facebook. Yeah. So my middle name's John. Believe yeah. it or not. Yeah. <laughs> and I had like a made up middle name for a while on Facebook. And when I tried to change it, it said, This isn't your real middle name. <laughs> really? It would deny you, what, John or the. Because it's not a female name. They thought yeah. I was just putting it for, f yeah. for the fun of it. And, and they, they, are, they asked for photographic ID. <laughs> really? So I gave it to them along with a really long letter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And now they don't question gender names in yeah, Facebook because really? of me. Really hot on it. And yeah. they're always trying, always, yeah. always trying to like close down. Mind you, I mean, I know I have people who do ridiculous, have ridiculous names on the internet. Yeah. But still, you know, that's that's their, I think that's their prerogative. Why, why should I, you know? It's a. Yeah. It's, you know. I mean, a, a company surely has not got the right to... To say, You're, that's not really you. Yeah. yeah. How dare I mean, they? I mean, if we don't know who we really are, which it seems like we don't, how can a company know I who... Mean, obviously, there's a big issue there with trans people and with people who might just be starting their journey towards transitioning or being yeah. non-binary or however yeah. they want yeah. to present themselves. Yeah. And yeah. then this, this big bail mod saying, that's not your name. Yeah. But, I mean... It's, it's still, I don't actually have my surname on Facebook, I use initials, uh, but it's still, you can bet your bottom dollar that it fucking knows anyway, they know, yeah. they know, <laughs> yeah. they know who I am. I mean, we, we, we could take this conversation in two directions, it could be, you know, actually talking about who we, can this actually help us in a way have a wider and a deeper understanding of who we are and this sense of self, we could go down that way or we could go down the, you know, how it, just how evil is Facebook. And I think Facebook seems to somehow get more of a, a, a bad rap than Google somehow because Google seems to sit in the background a bit more. I'm, um, I'm quite cynical about what the, because I've I guess I have quite a pessimistic outlook on what human nature is actually driven by. Yeah. But I think that the, the, you know, philosophers, particularly on the left, talk about yeah. how the primary difference between the 21st century self and the 20th century self yeah. is the rise of the individual. Right. So in the 21st century, we're much more individualist, not just yeah. in the kind of economic sense, but in the kind of cultural sense. We're all about self-expression, being yeah. ourselves and so on, whereas in the past there were more kind of op more overlapping tribal, forces, yeah. class, yeah. industry and all kinds of things that brought people together. But I kind of can't help but feel that the internet is just another manifestation of the new culture of the self. So it's and, while, of, and while it might yeah. appear to create overlapping uh, cultural and social forces, yeah. And particularly when the Arab Spring happened five years ago, people are like, oh, maybe the internet has revolutionary potential and so on. But it, 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 I'm not really sure because I feel like people's motive is more about self-expression yeah. than it is yeah. about connecting I mean, with each other. That's a very narcissistic way of looking at it because, you know. Okay, well, I mean, is it narcissistic to, to, to refine ourselves as individuals? I, I think... I think more to the point, it's it's a, a set of tools that are though maybe those aspects of human nature are colouring, and I would, I kind of agree with you, but I, I think it's sort of it's definitely been taken on as a as a tool for industry, for consumerist industry, to push us to buy more, and the, that culture of the individualist is it's more more again more saliently perhaps is only pushed as an idea by those companies if it makes people buy their shit. So it's like... Um, does it make people buy their shit? I think it, it does. I mean, Naomi Klein talks to, uh, in No Logo, Naomi Klein talks about how um, the most successful companies today, like McDonald's and Nike, uh, and all on these brands and Apple, they are not, they know that their success came when they knew they weren't selling products and that they were selling ideas. And yeah. it became about what ideas they were selling. So yeah. obviously Nike is synonymous with this idea of just do it. It's yeah. synonymous with productivity. Um, it's just and, and it's, it's all getting just, out there and but, getting your training shoes on. Yeah, but it's all like yeah. the internet is is. Uh, 
all of the revenue that people generate on the internet is through advertising. When people have YouTube channels they're making money from, the money that they're getting from Google is through ad revenue. So it's just this, it's this, it's been taken over, or, well, I don't it's know. It's a kind of over. giant mega advert, basically. Yeah, you can't get away from but that. But I mean, you know, what about this question of the self? Are we also advertising ourselves in a way on. On the, what's that? We have to. Yeah. Well, I do for my job anyway. Yeah. I don't want to, but I have to. Yeah. What is your job? Journalist. Right. So. So I have you to use my full name you. and post about everything I do. Yeah. So we're actually also complicit in this sense of a kind of, in a way, it's the universe as a kind of promotional universe, I suppose. Well, I guess the. the Sorry, I haven't thought enough about what I was going to say. Um, there, I, I'm a little bit cynical about yeah. how, particularly, I, there's, it's all very well to express oneself and so on, but there's something I find vulgar about how you need an outlet to uh, how when I when I see the way other people behave on social media, particularly when it's very kind of vain and people take photographs of themselves, yeah. it's almost as if they require egotistical affirmation. Yeah, and that is the main drive behind a lot of behaviour on the internet. Not all, but there's something. Thing, there's a vulgar side to it, particularly when people get very into Instagram and taking yeah. photographs of themselves. Yeah. There is quite an inherently like it's almost like they need the egotistical affirmation of other people in order to feel good about themselves. Yeah. And surely, if they were, if they really wanted to feel good about themselves, they would find it in themselves rather than in performing it to others okay. and getting an ego affirmation do from them. Affirmation of ego? Do I mean? Do we need it? Is it vulgar? Um, some of the I'm not everyone's like that. Well, I just think before social media, okay, so let's use this as an example. If I got lip fillers, so yeah. if I wanted lip fillers, yeah. and I wanted to show off about that, yeah. before social media, what would I do? I'd go to the pub and be like showing off my lip fillers. Yeah. It's the same thing. I'm just showing off without going to the yeah. pub, sitting in my bed doing the same thing. It's yeah. the lazy way of showing off, basically. Yeah. I mean, what about this question of affirmation of ego? I mean, do, we're still doing it. Everyone's yeah. always done it. It's just a new way. It's of a new way to do it. it. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a kind of part of our nature. Come on, have a seat. We have got George. We we have got Toby. We've got Katrina. We've got Rowan. I'm Mikey. What's your name? It's Aristoteles, but call me Leo. It's easier. Okay, welcome to call you whatever you want. <laughs> One of the things we started this whole conversation off actually by talking about whether people have got a right to call themselves whatever they want. Oh yeah. Um, so you know, oh, it's yeah. whatever you want. I can handle Aristoteles if you want, I, I, but I can also handle Leo. I basically make it a habit to yeah. let people call me whatever they want. So okay, so it's, I I, all right, I'll stick with Leo then. Basically, if yeah. they call me Afro or they call me fuckface, I don't yeah. know. Anyway, at the moment, we're talking about Facebook and the fact that people... What Toby's saying is people really get off on this affirmation of their ego by you know getting the likes out there, you post up your photos, and is that... Toby says it's vulgar. I get the sense from Katrina that that's just what we, that's who we are as kind of, as animals, as individuals, and um, basically, that's just, it's just doing, it's just doing a job that always was done. Um, I, th I think, um, for me, a key thing to remember is that that, that, that environment is made, like, it encourages people to feel like they need that affirmation. It encourages that, those aspects uh, of of ourselves because there's that tiny little dopamine hit that you get. So every time you get a like, or not even like that, or not even yeah. that, when you're like trying to, even when you're trying to just contact someone through messenger or something, yeah. um, and what you want. Like the the whole platform is meant to be addictive, and that's yeah. and the whole platform is meant to encourage this feeling that um, when you you want human. Sorry, I'm trying to put the words together. It's encouraging you to try and like have an analog for that human contact. So anytime yeah. you're trying to contact yeah. someone or you're trying to put a photo up, what you really yeah. want subconsciously is that is, is human contact. You want someone like yeah. you guys are here now to be there with you. And there are so many things we don't get from that, chemically yeah. speaking, when we're behind a computer screen. Yeah. But, but we are it, getting a trying, dopamine hit. By we're trying to simulate it. It's enough of a dopamine hit to get us to want to keep doing it, but yeah. it's not even anywhere near close to something that will give us what we need. Yeah. Are we getting a dopamine hit when, right now when we're just sitting around the table? In which case I'm getting massively hit with dopamine. Yeah. I just have to 
to say, we're all smelling each other right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Around you, you have a bacterial cloud as well. Yeah. So even if you can't smell each other, yeah. you're walking into each other's bacteria. Yeah. And that's the same bacteria that fucks your brain and makes you think the way you do, basically. Yeah. So you're so saying we're, we're kind of absorbing each other's clouds? Basically, yeah. Okay. So... Even if you even if you wanted to get connected to the technological clouds, you're yeah. stuck with the biological one, unfortunately. Come, come and absorb so our biological clouds. Just We're sort of talking. <laughs> a, it's, well, it kind of started off about social media and. and we kind of are, yeah. We, get, so, um, we started talking about social media and like how everyone's addicted and we're being farmed by Facebook and Google. But now it's more about this sense of who we are and like these 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 companies are kind of like kind of kind of um, keyed into this kind of almost addiction that we've got to this, you know, this like yeah, to the likes and the and the messages. But what Leo's saying as well is that. What they're not getting yet, anyway, is that when we're all around, we're, it's a, there's a chemical thing going on. There's our our bacteria, which is kind of floating off and mixing with each other. There's our sweat. There's our you know all our pheromones are all kind of like maybe, maybe it's tra trace, but it's there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What's your name? My name is Liz. Liz. We got George. We got Leo. We got Rowan. We got Toby and Katrina. You were going to say something? No, it's gone now. Yeah. Okay. Just soak up that. I know what I was going to say. I was yeah. going to say, I don't think everyone always gets the same interaction. Like, when we were just talking, I was thinking about something else. So I was actually thinking about myself. Yeah. So maybe you're getting more of an interaction of someone else, but it doesn't mean that I, they're I less. Think, yeah. I think I've been a little bit unfair. I don't, I don't think that the platform of social media and the internet is designed or brings out narcissism in everyone I think that if people have that particular streak in them then it can exacerbate it right that uh, so I do think that I've been a little bit too dogmatic I, d I do think that you c it is a very interesting way of reading people's personalities yeah. I think yeah. particularly with people's insecurities because yeah. it seems to me that the more people who are insecure look for ego affirmation in the particular realms of their life that they're particularly insecure about. So, for example, yeah. a girl who's insecure about her appearance will take more photos of herself on Instagram yeah. than someone who isn't. So okay. it's an interesting thing, I think. I think it's yeah. a very interesting way of reading yeah. people's... I'm not saying that the whole platform is a narcissistic yeah. Yeah. thing. I mean, is there, I mean, I get the sense that there's an element of us that that is just us, that we have an ego, we have a narcissistic element. I think a little part of it is ego stroking, but I think it's also about sort of creating some kind of like social capital, which brings it back to how businesses seem to run the internet. And maybe businesses and people are very similar. They're both trying to gain something. Um, we interpret it as narcissism, but really people are just trying to like spread themselves across a social market, or to put it in really horrible terms. But yeah. um, And I see companies as being kind of the same thing. They're not Instagramming their food pictures, but they're still Instagramming the latest products and, and, and yeah. it's, it's quite similar. Yeah, um, okay. This? I'm wondering if anybody's read the book called The Circle by Dave Eggers. It's fascinating. It's fictional, but it's a fascinating look at Silicon Valley and becoming all encompassed uh, in the company like Google, yeah. except in this case it's called The Circle. And your life depends on the number of likes you have and yeah. how the feedback you get from people on social media, not yeah. in person contact. It's fascinating. So it, it almost becomes like how, literally, how you're judged, your kind of level of success is your level of likes. Yeah. Um, I liked your point where you were saying that uh, I think it's just a matter of data because I don't think that anyone around this table or very few people around this table have realized but information is valuable data has value. Yeah, doesn't I mean, matter that's how George started it off actually before you It doesn't you matter here. if it's a selfie or if it's a picture of something, it yeah. has value and businesses can make money out of it. Exactly. Yeah, even out of my selfies. And yeah. not, it's not only that, but they, it's like if you pass it loads of similar pictures through an algorithm, yeah. then the algorithm learns better. Yeah. So then you can basically identify anything. Out. What can it learn from my selfies? It could, um, yep, yeah, how healthy you are, um, whether you smoke, whether you drink, how, yeah. 
Just all from a photo. All, all from a photo. And yeah. that is the real, for me, that's the end game. Like, uh, you were saying you were being too harsh on um, social media, yeah, on the platform, and I've been like that as well. I've been like, compl I completely rejected it, and then, um, and I would shout on everyone who, you know, wanted to be on it. And the reason that we behave like that is because the pace of change is too fast. And we don't, we haven't set up, in my opinion, we haven't set up a kind of framework for the civil liberties no, yeah. not. needed. Yeah. They, they yeah. can't catch up with it. It's like, exactly. right, remember in the 90s when people were worried about mobile phone use and cancer, yeah. right? No one, like, no one cares about it anymore. Yeah. It doesn't mean that it's not still a potential issue. It's just that the technology moves so fast and there's so much money in it that like, like, no one wants to ask the question, yeah. and there's a, a, a thing to be like, uh, there's a thing to be. I mean, what at. kind of legislation would you want to see? I mean, what? Well, what I think for a start, we need to def be def looking at the self, and we need to be fucking defining like all all of our thoughts and, and ideas in the way that they were as part of the self, but external to the body. Yeah. Because, okay. So our we, we haven't even really identified where we end and where no, our devices internet, are becoming yeah. we're becoming more cyborg our devices yeah. are becoming more who we are there's there's the internet of things there's also um, uh, like app controlled um, what do you call yeah ec, you know false body parts yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 yes exactly and that's increasingly becoming a thing yeah and we so we are already cyborgs like when we put when we record bits on our phone yes yeah what's that I'm a diabetic and I use an insulin pump. So, so I am a prototype cyborg. android, basically, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. I'm the first of my kind. Okay. As soon as I mean, it's part of the internet of yeah. things. Yeah, hang, hang on a sec, let's. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, also, you're a cyborg by wearing glasses, by driving a car, etc. Um, Oh, yeah, I, I kind of uh, I agree with what you said about legislation hasn't caught up, but I don't think it's necessarily um, like a fault of a slow lawmaking process. I think it might be deliberate because you know th there's so many cogs in the machine that have something to exploit by not having these laws in place. Sure, certainly. Yeah. Okay. I mean, but I still. I mean, okay. We need to define our kind of distributed electronic self. But that is that's not the <laughs> that's not that's only the beginning of the legislation. I mean what kind of possible legislation could you have that would actually give us more rights in this digital world? I think that regulating the internet is actually a really dangerous slippery slope because there was quite an interesting debate going on when uh, a few months ago Theresa May was talking about regulating the internet to prevent terror. Yeah. And um, a lot of kind of libertarian type people were saying that this was a very dangerous step. For yes. One of the beautiful things about the internet is that the state isn't a part of it. And if we start regulating the internet so people can't do certain things, that we might start regulating what the state yeah. might have more power to regulate what people see, mm. can do on there and so yeah. on. And I'm not saying that these laws couldn't be bad, but it could be a slippery slope towards yeah. some worse could things. Could it be actually a more controlled space then? And, you know, what's the difference between a control that that enforces our rights and a control that denies our rights? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think you have to be libertarian to necessarily... I mean, that's, that's a, that particular angle on it. And... I'll also add, this is, this is all just sort of, I'm identifying these issues, but I'm not necessarily coming up with a solution. Um, but, but for me, what Theresa, Theresa May, uh, since she's been Home Secretary, has always been pushing for this sort of thing. But yeah. how, it just shows illiteracy as well. It shows illiteracy of the technology, the way that she and Amber Rudd want to, they, they talk about terror, but terror is really not the main issue and it's not really the main benefit they'd get from it. It's all political capital they're trying to get by saying we're fighting terror. But what they want to do is they want to stop um, companies from having end-to-end -end encryption in their software, which just it, it basically means it, it opens us all to hacking of our information, hacking of our communications by third parties as well as by the state. But really, like... What kind of infrastructure are they going to have to look through everyone's fucking messages? So it's it shows an alarming amount of illiteracy. Yeah. They're just acting like, yeah, we can just do this. Um, but I think the issue is is less about the internet can be this this free thing and more um, trying to create this panopticon 
scenario. So do you know what a panopticon is? It's a kind of prison that was designed, I don't know which century it was, but like, it's, yeah, it's a prison yeah. where from, from a central you point you can see, you yeah. can observe all the prisoners at any one time. So this, the internet means that for the first time in history we have the possibility of a Vast, vast digital panopticon. Yeah, they're all seeing yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're all seeing. Okay, we've got a new face at the table. What's your name? Ellie. Ellie. We have got Toby, we've got Pat, we've got George, we've got Leo, we've got Rowan and Mikey. Um, do you want to. You rush to the table. Do you want to make a point at this point or you just want to just pick up the pieces? What we're talking about basically is the internet and our, our rights, really. And, and do we want. Do we want to have rights enforced on the internet? Are we worried about large social media companies kind of almost um, farming us and uh, farming our data? Or are we? do we want the internet to be a place where rights are kind of, are kind of self-enforced in a way? And, and um, are we worried about the government stepping in and stopping us from doing things on the internet? But that assumes that the government have got the power to do that when in reality business runs the world and the governments are basically so they don't even have the power to no, not really. no. Okay. they can but it will always be in favor of those who are commercial interests yeah. yeah okay nationals don't have any real uh, dedication to any sovereignty They've not got any, they're not bound to one sovereignty, and that's the advantage of them being multinationals, is that they transcend, completely transcend that government, that state paradigm. Um, so we're all a bit fucked, really, because they're the ones with the, the fucking money. Okay, so and you have, you have yeah. big, you have companies wanting to strong arm governments into not, yeah. say, not banning bee killing pesticides, as an example. Yeah. And, pro yeah, and trying to, yeah. Yeah, okay, so conclusion, we're all fucked. Um, yeah. Okay, well. I, mean, I, th I think it's a bittersweet inevitability that eventually one company will be asked by a big government, say the US government, to do something and they will turn around and say, no, fuck you. And it might be the, equi the online equivalent of some kind of war yeah. or something. You think like, at yeah. some point there'll be a big I think, I, I think it's but an absolutely realistically inevitable. I, I can't think what it will, how it will manifest, but it might be something like the US government saying to Google, you know, okay, uh, 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 you know, hand over some information about this group or, or yeah. some, some people or something. Well, I mean, there was, and Google there was would turn around and say, no, yeah. fuck you, and take down some element of the government in yeah. retaliation. That's yeah. not impossible. Okay, will there be a war between Google or Apple and, or um, Facebook and the government? And I guess it's, it's weird how now we're kind of... the. U.S. government takes precedence over any other government as well as the as the one that the war is going to be Bigger with. Is better, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they have all the service. Yeah. I, I would like to say, w there's an element of fear in all of this. Yeah. That's the most important thing. Yeah. Um, and while people are afraid, they can't act. Yeah. Um, but I would like to say. Are we right to be fearful? Yeah, I think so. I yeah. think so. It's the same as being afraid of death. It's yeah. the same as being afraid of death. Death yeah. exists and is, and is there all the time. You can't yeah. run away from death. You will die eventually. Which is why, why I wanted to bring it to this. Yeah. That we're afraid of these centralized powers, okay, but I believe that nature in its rawest form is decentralized anyway. Right. So whatever happens, it's going to win. Yeah. Nature will always win. It, always. Yeah. Always, yeah. and and this is why I think we need to align ourselves with that kind of. It's got to do with maths. I, f yeah. I, I could elaborate, but decentralization is yeah. just a better idea with our data as well. So so it yeah. doesn't all get. If you put everything in a single server, then a hacker goes into the server, it's done. They got all that information, okay. you know, all those accounts yeah. being downloaded. But if they were spread about, it's harder. Okay. Yeah. They want right. decentralization. Okay. Yeah, the, um, there's a really good TV show called, or a TV show I consider quite good called Silicon Valley, which actually touches on this exact um, scenario, and it's, it's quite prophetic in a weird way, because it's about uh, taking power away from servers and companies and governments and having this truly distributed, completely free internet. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of it's been the pipe dream since Tim Berners-Lee kind of sat down and programmed some stuff to share information, and it's never been realised because people have you know uh, a vested interest in having servers that they control, they have the passwords and so on. 
But having a truly distributed system means that, uh, you know, at least in theory, it couldn't go down. It would require a global catastrophe to destroy it, in which case right. it doesn't matter anyway. Um, so, yeah, it would be, and it's, so it's a very biological paradigm of, of So we share technology. information on each other's computers rather than... Sort of. I mean, uh, the problem is there is no way of doing it yet, but the, the foreseeable uh, like idea is that you have an element of your machine that is yours and an element that is everyone's. And so right. yours is protected, but everyone's is shared. And okay. so you, you, you have backups of yours on everyone else's, so that if right. your actual physical machine blows up, gets stolen, whatever, that everything is still elsewhere. And with the, with the right key, you can bring it back yeah. together. And yeah. so you, you never Elliot. lose anything, and everyone yeah. um, you know has privacy, and, and it's the best of both worlds. But it doesn't favor com companies yeah. or governments. It only favors individuals. OK, so um, Ellie, does that make sense to you? Toby, you get what he's saying? I kind of understand, yeah, I understand what they're saying. It's like, I don't know how to expand on it, like... Yeah. Okay, I mean, does this I need this idea? Toby, do you get what? No? Okay. You're nodding, so you I seem to know. Yeah, I kind of, kind of understood, yeah, yeah. 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 No, ask me questions. Yeah, Let's I mean, what, I mean so how does this work? I mean, to me, like... That's the thing. I, I don't know. To, you know, I'm just a user of the internet, and where you don't, I don't really concern myself with where that data is stored. You know, it's just a. In a way, you've just got the 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 screen, and whatever is behind it, all the wires and gubbins are just, you know, out there somewhere. It's a funny thought that maybe one day in the future, like a bit like vegetarianism, there might be a new movement when people yeah. don't use the internet. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. Like maybe if you stop using it, then you yeah. would take the kind of power away from it. Like some kind of weird date of veganism where you okay. just use a typewriter. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just had a really weird thought. Okay, okay. A date of veganism where you use a typewriter. Uh, like George R. 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 Uh, Martin, the, the Game of Thrones writer, um, he doesn't use an internet connected computer. He uses like a 1990s <laughs> MS DOS computer to write Game of Thrones yeah. uh, with no spell checker or anything. And I feel it's a little bit like that. I mean, but I, I, what I worry about is that people might do that with the best intentions but end up just hurting themselves because taking yourself off the grid sounds like a brilliant idea I'd love that you know that's why we go on holiday and stuff but it hurts you yeah it kind of me it takes you out of the game a little bit in terms of like living in contemporary society getting jobs getting mortgages off, all that crap can you it's, live offline that's the thing yeah. is it possible to live offline these days it's the dream yeah. Uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Um, it's according to what sort of life you want, isn't it? If you want this sort of life with all of the all of these trappings, no. No. You know, and yeah, if you want to live in some little eco village somewhere, you know, I don't know, in the Mojave Desert, in a yeah. I don't know, a geodesic dome. That's you know, then you yeah. can, yeah. You okay. Can, these things are available, but not for the masses. Okay. Only for those people who can. Yeah. You know, do that, and that does require. You, I mean, stuff. you can't live offline in in Liverpool, in just in town. I think, no. I think one of the I think one of the main things we're at loss of as a product of the yeah. internet is that I think that in the past, because people weren't being, uh, because we're constantly connected to, uh, you know, the, the social networking of the modern world all the time, we don't have this opportunity to be introspective. Right. So it's like, if you, if you think, for example, if you were living back in the 1950s and you got yeah. on a train from London to Edinburgh that took six hours, think of yeah. all the thoughts you could have thought staring out the window. Yeah. And the th like, you know, the things you could have thought about your friends or your lover while you're mm. on the way yeah. and all these kind of interesting emotional things that could have yeah. happened. Now, I think that we're at loss of that. We, there's no... Yeah, people there's aren't no downtime. In, we're not as introspective because there's, yeah. we're always being distracted. And it's really strange because like, I, I had an extremely rural upbringing like yeah. near Wales. I grew up in like a tiny village where yeah. there was no phone signal or yeah. anything. Did they have a geodesic dome? Sorry? Yeah, <laughs> but it was yeah, yeah, it's yeah. really strange. I remember yeah. when I first moved to the city, I definitely sensed that there was this kind of very strong... Yeah. Uh, clash of self between yeah. the rural self and the urban self because yeah. they'd be more socialised and I felt it was more introspective because right. I wasn't okay, as exposed. So you're used to spending time on your own just kind yeah. of um, yeah, yeah, just being. Think, yeah, I think that intellectually and socially, that's a good thing. Okay, so you've got um, more time to think about stuff. Yeah. Okay. Do we need more downtime, more time away? F Come and have a seat on the table of chat. Um, at the moment, we're talking about. Actually, with the record store. Uh, uh, 
Uh, Don't tell me. Yeah, okay, all right. Well, I won't mention that. I was going to about to plug it, but I won't in this case. Um, okay, so we've got Katrina, we've got Toby, we've got Pat, um, we've got Leo and Rowan. What's your name? Annette. What is it? Annette. Annette. The moment we're talking about the internet, we're talking about social media, being farmed by social media. There's this question about whether we can actually go offline now. Is it possible? Pat says yes, if you live in a geodesic dome in the Mojave Desert. Um, Toby grew up in a rural village in Wales where you've got more time just to kind of, you know, wander lonely as a cloud, so to speak, and just, you know... Stew. Yeah, stew. Stew, stew in your own mental... Stew. Stew in your mental <laughs> juices. But I, I grew up without it all, so yeah. it's very easy for me. I quite often leave... I left my phone at home and I'm not yeah. really bothered. You yeah. know, I won't lie to you. you, don't, you don't Life goes anxiety. on. But, like, people were like, oh, don't you really miss it? And I was like, no, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm okay, you know, that's, yeah. it's just life, it's just one of those things, and I don't need to be connected to everybody. And that's you're every leaving already, day, you haven't said so. anything yet. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Because I'm scheduled to, to help with Dick Vinyl, so I feel like yeah. I've just Afterwork. wanted to have a look, I didn't realise. You didn't realise you were on a talk show, where well, you are. <laughs> Going back to the uh, to vinyl, so yeah. I, I keep I keep an ear out. Keep an ear out. Keep, I mean, in a way, the vinyl thing is a sort of offline exactly. kind of so thing because like doing the right thing. yeah, because you can't <laughs> download vinyl, can you? Yeah. You, it takes up a lot of space, yeah. Very heavy. Yeah. The, you know, nostalgia culture, what a lot of people call postmodernism, is like this, like, craving this 21st, in the 21st century for that lost limb of the old world, like that yeah. kind of more humane, yeah. introspective world. Yeah. Yeah, I think that, that this is where a lot of this nostalgia culture comes from. I mean, we're at a psych festival, so that you could argue this is like a nostalgia is fest it nostalgic in its own right. That and it's a symptom of perhaps the estrangement from the kind of feelings I was talking about subconsciously. Okay. okay. Is it all about nostalgia, the vinyl and the, the psych? I mean, I'm this. Not that nostalgia yeah. in a dusty way. I didn't mean it in a pessimistic, dusty way. I just meant, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's definitely yeah. looking a back kind of, somewhat. Yeah, okay. Vinyl requires attention. You can't just bang it on and forget about it because it stops. Yeah. It's like the Japanese tea um, ceremony yeah. of music, isn't it? Yeah. Where you have to get it out and you wipe it, and it's, you know, yeah. it's all like, it's, it's very ceremonial vinyl compared to, to digital. Okay, yeah. so there's a kind of ritual going on there. Yeah. I mean, in, in, I, I kind of agree, but in, in my experience of my friends who collect vinyl, I think it's more because it appeals to obsessive compulsion, and they're like, they go to a gig and they're like, oh, there's a vinyl section, and they go and buy it, and it's just, it's, it's, they, they talk it's about the nostalgia, they talk about that kind of thing, but actually, yeah, I think it's, yeah, that's a good word for it, I think it's more about just that, they want the collection, they have to, you know, they've got all the Electric Wizard albums, except that one, they have to buy it and complete the collection, and I think it's a little bit to do with that okay. as well. I mean, it's interesting, this has been quite, there's been quite a lot of psychological terms being dropped here, from the narcissism, the introspection, the fetishism, um, are we getting a kind of portrait of the human psyche here, when we actually think we're talking about the internet? Sorry, I was, yeah, well, I was having a dig at you. I said well, no one said fetishism. Oh, that's, said fetishism. that's all you. That's yeah, all you, yeah. mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm joking. I agreed, with, I agreed which validated it, which includes yeah. it in our canon, so it's yeah. fine. It's fire. We're preaching to the converted, I think. We're all the same here. And, and I'm sure, I mean, there's nothing can beat the physical. Nothing can beat the physical. Imagine having a lover by your side and you're always on your phone. Yeah. A lover. All right, sure. Could be a wife, could be a... But, you know, it's trying to avoid categories here, and um, you, you'll only uh, value that love when you have an argument. You'll only value that love when they go away. Yeah. It's okay. Seriously, if you spend too much time with a person, you get sick of them. Yeah. You do. So, in, a, in the same way as, you, as we need this kind of downtime from the internet, we maybe also need downtime from the physical... Everything. Um, ...as well, and maybe uh, there's a... Balance. Balance to be Balance stuck. is yeah. the game. As again, as a diabetic, yeah. I have to keep my levels in a, an optimal range, and that is the perfect metaphor for everything that I do in my life. Yeah. I have to take a balanced approach. Yeah. And if I don't, I'll die. Yeah. yeah. And it, so you know, everything's at stake. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that, I mean, that kind of closes it all down. It's, I'm so, so sorry, it's so, guys. so moderate that, so that, that comment. Yeah, that's quite uh, nice. That's a good way to end it all, I think. Yeah. Do you, do you sit here all day? Are you yeah. here all day? You're here all day. Here all day. I normally do this into this microphone. I'm here all day.
Yeah. Wow. Would you like a veggie um, uh, scotch egg? Would you like a veggie scotch egg? <laughs> uh, maybe later, not They're right really now. They're really nice. Maybe not, not right now, because I've just had... I've actually had four real eggs for breakfast. Four? Yeah, because we... we yeah, it's going to be... Yeah, well, he likes it. He likes the smell of, like, real... Fart, eggy farts. <laughs> Um, it was I only I only ordered two, but Rowan's a vegan and he he ordered another two, so I ended up eating really four. Crashed out from the, the what, yeah. do you think, what do you think our um, interaction would be like if we met without you being in the middle? Question to you guys at the back. Um, I think it would have been really tense. Yeah, because having a person who doesn't who doesn't say anything means you basically have you know you know when two kids argue and the dad's there. You know, the dad's the impartial one. He is mm. the judge. Yeah. You know, and you're you're a very nice judge. Yeah. So I'm we like can say dads. whatever we like. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah. I'd say more more of an interlocutor than a judge because he's not like imparting kind of judgment to us. He's just facilitating our work. Like, yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's more more like somebody keeping track, control of the flow of things and making sure there's a trajectory and so on. Um, but I don't know. I mean, you know, like the, the thing about this kind of festival is everyone kind of gets along. There's been I've seen and heard very little in the way of our argument it's usually been around this table in kind of a fairly constructive fashion apart from the guy who really really hated Facebook and everyone who uses it which is a bit weird um, so you know I don't yeah. think there's going to be much antipathy between yeah, people I mean, it's, I mean it's hard to get an argument going t in this festival <laughs> should, should we find something we don't agree on then that might be yeah. quite fun yeah. drunk and argue yeah. <laughs> we'll get just drunk and happy and kind of like yeah, yeah. yeah. what's that I'll come and join you again yeah, we we'll need an argument what, what can we have an argument about Hey, I can have an argument about it. Yeah, can we come and help us with an argument? Yeah, the mic, it's the mic. I, I've got to go and do some managing at the moment, but we'll be back and come and see you later. Yeah. If someone said I don't like psych music, then that would yeah. probably cause think, a bit of a... Uh, I think guitar bands are dead, man. <laughs> <laughs> guitar music. Guitar music is over. Yeah. Okay. Um, which was, we're searching for an argument. I feel that it has to be a bit more felt than that. Have you seen any music ever being over? Argument. Mm. Have you just been doing chain reactions all, all day? What like, do you mean chain reactions? So, like, do you just improvise the subject? Or have yeah, you I mean, got it just floats from one thing to another. It keeps going. And, you know, we, the, the nice thing about that is you find different connections that you never expected between different subjects. Do you you should be out here. I will be. I will be later on. I will be later on. <laughs> And then you'll hear a lot of opinions, and I, I personally, <laughs> I'm probably the least, you know, liking of guitar music and psych what's stuff. The most interesting, what's the most interesting conversation you've had this weekend? This one, right now. Oh really? Eggy Just because it's now. I can see it. I can see it. He's baffled. When we're talking, he's baffled. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Look. Well, I, I, I mean, I, you know, I mean, that's a, that is a standard sort of response because you, you're open to the new. Come and sit down. Come and sit down, Pat. Come on, give us a couple of minutes. We've got a new face to the table. What's your name? I'm Kath. Kath. Um, we've got Toby. We've got Katrina. We've got Leo. And we've got Rowan. Um, I'm Mikey, as you know. Um, where do we want to? We, if it, I feel like we want to have an argument, we can't find anything. I want to do. Yeah. I want to freak you out and make you run out of this circle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think we should all drive him insane. <laughs> oh, great. Thank you. Thank well, you. you're doing that because we've destroyed the thread of the conversation and now he's desperately yeah. looking for something. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, maybe it's the same with the internet. Um, Public nudity should be allowed. Sure. What? <laughs> Public nudity. Yes. I, yeah. I believe that. I, yeah. Are yeah, you going to be the first one to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll get arrested, but <laughs> yeah. I couldn't hear. Yeah. No, you agree, you agree with the principle. But I you think don't in control, but I don't necessarily want to see everyone naked. Yeah, I don't want to like think in a, like. Obviously, I I would probably like have maybe more sexual thoughts. I don't want that. Yeah, I don't want that forced upon me. Okay, would you have more sexual thoughts if everyone was naked? Yeah. I'm a nurse. I've seen. Yeah. Many, many naked people. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, you, you seen, don't have more naked have, no have you seen any any fit bodies that you think? Oh, they've got. I've seen footballers and that. Yeah. yeah, you're not that bothered. I was doing a job, yeah. yeah okay. So it, it becomes very mundane and it's a yeah. commonplace thing, I think. 
Okay, can I suggest a technological solution? We can use augmented reality to clothe naked people for you, but not for other people Almost who aren't like that fussed sort of like about Go it. Google a little bit like uh, Google Safe Search, except yeah. it's like on, a, on an augmented Safe reality view. system. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In, a, yeah. in a strange way, if, we, if the sight of naked people became super normalised and something we saw every day, we would actually desexualize the body. Yeah. And actually, you could argue that things like perversion, like, you know, when people are perverted, is often caused by a lack of sexual stimulus. I, I, I know there's a double-edged sword to what I'm saying, yeah. but in a strange way, if we normalise nudity, it would be we would desexualise the body. Yeah. In a weird way. Okay. So but I don't particularly want to walk around naked all the time. No. I mean, not, I'm just not, saying. Not it's an interesting thought, isn't it? Yeah. It's too cold. It's too cold to walk around naked all the time. But you look at yeah. art, don't you? Like from like the different centuries and yeah. how. Was the it warmer then? In medieval times, it yeah. was warmer. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, you look at how, you know, the the body has changed in a sense that what's seen as desirable, and I always yeah. find that really, really interesting. Is like, yeah. you know, I'm, I'd like I'd like it to go back to like how it was in the 19th century because yeah. then I would have like the greatest body ever, basically. Yeah. Like it would be like yeah. something that people aspire to be like. Yeah. Like I wanted like you know the pre raphael pre raphaelite yeah. body kind of thing. I mean, to. to does it change? Would it change if we were all naked? Would we aspire to different body shapes? I, I, I want to pose this to you. I, th I think that. What do you want to pose? No, 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 no physical posing. Um, come, come and pose the question to us. That, what I would say is, I understand where you're coming from, where you'd say um, I'd have all these sexual feelings if everyone was naked, and I believe that's the case because humans have spent so many hundreds of years clothed that now. It's like what is unseen is desirable. You right. can't be perverted if. Do you, do you know what I mean? If you're hiding something, someone wants to see it. Yeah. 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 See what I mean? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's why people wear certain clothes, doesn't it? Like, there's clothes that make people feel or look sexy, m sometimes more so than being naked would. Yeah. And they're yeah. tight, yeah. Okay. So yeah. clothes can be actually more sexy than nakedness. Yeah, because uh, it's forbidding the sight of the body, mm, okay. which I think feeds into what I was saying before. Yeah. I would desexualise the body if you okay. were naked. I just think clothes are actually a really important part of identity. Like you can tell a lot about someone, and like I really enjoy like wearing some like nice dresses that I have, and they make me feel like happy. So lame. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. Just not yeah. I mean, where would we be if we all had to be naked? We couldn't have that sense of self expression of we'd have to do it with tattoos and piercings and, uh, thoughts, yeah. thoughts. Um, um, in Victorian times uh, yeah. people just showing an ankle people would actually get very excited by that yeah. because that was all they could see yeah. so it's but uh, as you it, it, it is the fact that if you are totally naked it, it takes away some of the aura doesn't it it's it like takes Japan, away isn't that. it with the back of the neck it's something that is the same throughout different cultures, but it's different parts of the body that are seen yeah. as being, you know, a sexual. Yeah, yeah, so it was like ankles in Victorian time, but in Japan with like the geishas, and yeah. they used to like the kimonos would go down a little bit at the back and it right. would show like a certain shape, yeah, and that was seen as being alluring, yeah, like and it was, it was, you know, the certain like ladies that had. A certain poise would be the ones that were more right, okay. kind of like sexually attractive. So uh, the, 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 the neck, neck curve was very important. Yeah. You yeah. have to have a good curve of your neck. Okay. Um, can I mean? Could it be any part of the body that we could, you know, could, that we could sort of identify? Yep. That, that's what I would say. It's whatever we make of it. Yeah. Like we're the first species that can yeah. decide what to do. You know, we, we can decide whether it's the eyes that I want to do or whether yeah. it's the hair or... Yeah. But we have brains that can actually do that. Yeah, so we and can that's adapt. significant. Yeah. That's sig very significant. What that's body part would you choose as a sort of like, as your favourite kind of... I think I'm, I think I'm kind of set on hair. Yeah? And... I don't know. I've got, I've got no chance then. <laughs> God, you know what? Yeah, yeah. I'll be here for a, an hour yeah, if I yeah. started. <laughs> go okay, for it. Or maybe we should go around the table and find out, you know, what 
people would have as their favourite body part. I, 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 I find like, myself weirdly attracted to shoulders, and I can't quite explain okay. that because it seems almost weirdly prudish. But just like yeah. I just notice shoulders and, and probably nice hair as well. Maybe it's related because it's kind of one meets the other sometimes. Something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay, we've got a new face to the table. Um, this is talking. Here's a pop-up talk show at the moment. We're kind of talking about what would the world be like if we were all naked? Probably would it be a strangely yeah. desexualized world? And now we're sort of talking about different cultures, how they kind of sexualize different parts of the body, like the Japanese apparently, um, they like the back of the, the, the back of a woman's neck. Um, and Leo like, yeah, Victorians liked a bit of ankle. Um, dainty ankle. Uh, some dainty, an a, a dainty ankle action. Oh, yeah, he and shoulders. and uh, Rowan, uh, Leo hair, Rowan shoulders. So we're just going around at the moment, um, just seeing if there's a particular body part that people would like to heighten the kind of sexual allure of, if that makes sense. What's your name? Uh, my name is Angelo. 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 Uh, we've got Leo, we've got Rowan, we've got Katrina, we've got Toby, we've got Kath and Mikey. What are you going to say? Um, I was going to say, going back to the thing about you saying that, you know, we should all be a bit more naked. Who again. Was saying that? Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I just think, you know, when people say, like, oh, you're really pretty, not. Not that I'm saying people say that to me, but you know, when you, I, I watch people compliment each other on something that they were born with, yeah. I'd much rather someone say, oh, that's a cool jacket, because I chose to wear that jacket. Right. So, like, I actually find it really insulting if someone goes, oh, you're really pretty. It's such a dead compliment. You know, like, yeah. if I wasn't, I, st I still didn't choose it. <laughs> yeah. I didn't put any work into that. Yeah. Okay. So it sucks. Okay. <laughs> so you'd rather be complimented? I find, on I find it really off-putting if men yeah. say something like yeah. that. I'm like, ugh. Like, like, yeah. like my brain. Okay. This is, this, well, we've, look, you've scared Angelo away now. Angelo, you're really pretty. Oh, it's gone. Yeah. Did he like it or not? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Uh, That's probably the, the the best moment of his day. <laughs> Somebody's a, a stranger telling him that he's pretty. Yeah. It's lovely. I was in the. I mean. Yeah. I was just. Gonna, I wonder if it's a grass is greener thing though, because yeah. like I love the idea of getting compliments, but I never get compliments. So it'd be amazing. I just think it would be on the rare yeah. occasion it happens. It's like an amazing feeling, and I wonder if it's just because society is structured in such a way that it's typical for like men to compliment women and not the other way around that you that we have that kind of like how asymmetry would, how would you react though if someone said to you uh, well, I mean I don't, I don't know probably get, I don't know uh, it's okay. an infrequent occurrence try. so I don't we know I said you were gorgeous uh, that, that feels quite trite because it was like yeah. you know well as in it was like uh, it was almost like fishing for it so it's, it's, it did, yeah. It's, yeah 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 you know what I mean yeah 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 exactly we'll have yeah, to yeah. wait a little we'll have to wait a bit and then we'll just like bring it on him in a bit <laughs> when the conversation's <laughs> moved on so we just remember Remember that one, park it, and <laughs> come back later to that. Yeah. If you, if I met you last night, I'd probably say something nice. Cause like I go, I sometimes go out of my way to like compliment people because yeah. it's actually just a nice way to start a conversation. People smile. But like. do you? I mean, do you try to compliment? people on things they've done rather than... Well, obviously it's nice to receive a compliment about how you look, but I'm just saying I'd rather yeah. appreciate something else rather yeah. than their face or something, yeah. you know. So I'd maybe say something like, oh, cool t-shirt. Yeah. Like, I like that band too, or where do you originate from? I'd rather, and then like, I'd, I'd like dig a bit, and then I would like, but yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't lie, I wouldn't give out a compliment if I didn't want to. Yeah. I'm not like a but you like whore, to, But you like to give out a compliment if you can find one to give. Well, if it's you just nice it. to be yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah. It's nice yeah. to be nice. Okay. Um, nice to be nice. I mean, I think everyone would agree with that. I've got an anecdote. Yeah. So I was walking down the street today, yeah. and literally, bald, uh, sort of white old guy, glasses, yeah. with his family, yeah. and he looks at me, and he winks at me. Yeah. All right. This happened. This happened. Yeah. Now I knew it wasn't in a sexual way. Yeah. Because I can tell that I look like this. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like whenever I see a hippie, yeah. or whenever I see someone who I think is a bit and out there, yeah. I tend to like kind smile. Of going, hey. And I, exactly, yeah. yeah. And I yeah. knew that that's what he was doing. And yeah. well, I think it was like a kind of like. Hippie connection. It's like I know you and you know me. Yeah. Like yeah. I know your digs and you know my digs. Right, okay. You know what I mean? So and you're just no bonded, just a bonding. Yeah, and there's yeah. none of that, you know, like there's very little of that. Yeah. Just on the street, you know. Yeah. That's Is that because there's not enough hippies on the street? There's not enough people being themselves on the street. Okay. That's what I'd say. So it's about being yourself then. It's about not just being yourself in terms of 
yeah, in, in terms of the, the nice feelings you have, I suppose. I grew up in Hounslow. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And um, I used to wear quite heavy eye makeup when I was younger. <laughs> And this car went by and it's hooting. I was like, oh wow, I think these guys like, you know. Yeah. And then I just heard, dyke. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so people being themselves when they've got nasty things to say is not quite as good, yeah. Uh, do you know what though? There's nothing better than a good rip. I mean, that's a rubbish one. But I used to go out with this lad. I used to live in Sheffield, and I went out with this lad who was like really skinny. He he wore skinny jeans when lads didn't wear skinny jeans just before it kind of came back into fashion in like the mid 2000s. And we were walking past Bramall Lane, Sheffield United like football grounds, and there was a big gang of lads on the other side of the road, and one of them just went, "Why are you wearing tights? Why are you wearing tights?" And we, the pair of us, were just yeah. absolutely pissing ourselves like. <laughs> That was a, I feel like that was a good rip, and yeah. it, like it wasn't like it didn't yeah. come across so, like overtly negative. It was just really bloody funny. Okay. So I kind of I kind of appreciate a good rip every now and then as yeah. well. Everyone loves a compliment, but if somebody yeah. gets ripped and it's a really good one, it's bloody great. Yeah. They're like paying attention to you anyway. It's just like they've actually taken a moment of their time. Yeah. <laughs> and they've come up with a song as well. So it's all wearing skinny jeans about two years later though. That's the thing. Okay. It was like my ex-boyfriend had to go to the tailors to get his jeans even skinnier than the skinny jeans that are out there and then they were in Topshop about like six months later so they were all in football lads and like squeezing their big fat legs into skinny jeans thank you yeah okay well was there a point over here I saw a finger raise or was uh, it here um, I was going to say people shouldn't take themselves too seriously people should yeah, yeah exactly yeah. like and I'm not saying that people who get bullied, you yeah. know, you know what I mean? That's like a, that is a product of the actual environment and sort but of... I suppose that because they can't escape it. Exactly. Yeah. And it's, it's there every day, you know, you can't escape it. But by not taking yourself or anybody else seriously... Have you ever had, have you ever, as uh, Kath puts it, been ripped? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Has it ever big been... nose, uh, yeah. big hair... Yeah, no, 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 I bet. Yeah. Like... You know, I've got a bit of North yeah. African. I mentioned yeah. it once, and then yeah. that was it. The year was big nose. Right. Do you see what I mean? People would just attach themselves like parasites yeah. to the one yeah. thing. One idea. No, no, no. Yeah. But um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I've been called, you know, Spanish. And, yeah. You know, people mistaking my. I'm Greek. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. The more it happens, the more you don't give a shit. The more it happens. I'm not a massive fan of the culture of offence. Like when people get really petty about yeah. insults, it's like, I'm gay, and a few months ago, Richard Hammond, uh, Richard Hammond, who I hate, I hate Top Gear, but anyway, he made a joke. Someone said, he, he, someone offered him an ice cream, and he said, no, I'm too straight for that. And all these gay people were like, oh my God, this is so, this is so betraying the suffering the gay people suffer every day. And I'm like, yeah. it's, that's such a stupid, like, I like yeah. just laugh at it. I, if anything, yeah. if you want to, <laughs> if you want to, no, one of yeah. the ways in which you could normalise um, these kind of xenophobic yeah. things is to actually laugh along with them and point out how inane and stupid they are, yeah. rather yeah. than being like, oh, like I just find yeah. that so silly. Yeah. So and and also that's a, a good example of like uh, of a case which definitely isn't offensive. It's just yeah. a joke. It's just something about an ice cream. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I don't feel personally offended that. Yeah. Like. Richard Hammond implies that gay people eat more ice cream than straight yeah. men. Yeah. I don't give Are a shit. Are there any shit. statistics? Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> people might eat more ice cream. Do we know? Yeah. Um, I, personally, I love ice cream. Yeah. I mean, like, particularly if you think about... I think one of the best things about being British, if, if you look at British comedy, like, where would British comedy be without offensiveness? I mean, if you look at something like The Life of Brian, yeah. which is probably the most important comedy film ever made, like, people, Christians were protesting outside the front, like, you know, yeah. even if, like, sometimes things that people say are offensive and so on, that is yeah. one of the key ingredients of countercultural thought and speech, is to be quite pressing and sharp with what you say. Not that I'm yeah. equivalent seeing like the life of Brian and Richard Hammond, who I think yeah. is an idiot. Yeah. He's I mean, an idiot. I mean, yep. yep. So what, what I was going to say is that um, if, when I, I haven't heard that quote by Richard Hammond, but if I heard that, what I'd immediately think was it's 
maybe a bit um, self-deprecating because it's like to me that's maximum insecurity, yeah. and like, I actually would interpret that as still being kind of funny, but not for the reasons he maybe thought it was. But yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I think he's a bit of a dick as well. So I don't think he was doing it to yeah. be self-deprecating, I mean, but, but I think funny, that's how know, I read it. <laughs> talking about being offensive, so far already we've called Richard Hammond a, a knob and a dick. Um, but, but it was yeah. almost def it's reactive. It's not. We weren't the. We, we didn't cast the first stone. It's it's different. Uh, it's Richard Hammond cut. Was it um, Jeremy Clarkson that cast the first ilk, stone? Same difference. <laughs> um, okay, so so we're talking about Richard Hammond now, and uh, Richard Hammond's a knob. I think everyone would agree with that here around the table. But if Richard Hammond, if you're watching, you know that's not my opinion. I'm I'm sitting on my opinions here. Um, where, where do we want to go with this? Do we want to talk about Richard Hammond being a knob? Do we want to talk about? Um, Tell stories. Yeah. What, have you got a story that you want to kick off with? I don't know. You have to prompt me. Um, well, I guess we can talk about all the things we've talked about so far. Have you got any stories about somebody being offensive to you that was actually funny? Have you got a story? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. After Brexit, someone gave me the old classic uh, "Go back to your own country" line. Yeah. I was just pissing myself. Oh, what? What country did they imagine that to be, or did they not define it? Is it just out there? A lot of people think I'm Spanish, so maybe he thought Spain. God. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I think that was a bit of a darker example. Yeah. Um, in a weird sense, even though I do think the kind of xenophobic, populist, right wing politics we've had recently has been yeah. frightening, I do think some of us on the left, of which I am one. Yeah. Oh, you're, have, you're on the left? Right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, of which. No, 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 no. But. I think that we do yeah. have to accept that, yeah. particularly with cultural matters, I think yeah. that we've been a bit too heavy-handed with stopping people from discussing certain things, right. and that has caused a backlash. Right, so we like actually put the, the stopper on, on you know, some of these ideas, it, we've not actually had them out there. It's like the movement in America called the alt-right that helped elect Donald Trump was yeah. originally a movement that started in response to Gamergate, which was a controversy about feminism in the music, in the video game industry. Right. And actually, it was that movement grew out as a reaction against left-wing uh, yeah. policing of speech, if they want, if that's how they describe it. Yeah. And I think that um, even though it is important for people to not say unpleasant things, and when people do say unpleasant things, uh, they should be called out, out yeah. but we shouldn't do it to the extent that it's overbearing yeah. And it causes a negative reaction, so and I think that's what's yeah. happened. Have actually. we been calling out those offensive comments in the in the wrong way? That's a, kind of shutting down the debate rather than actually having it out, so to speak. Come and get involved in this if you want to. Have you ever said something offensive? No. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I, I kind of I see where you're coming from, and I kind of agree and disagree. I think because yeah. I think it's up to the individual who might be being persecuted to have the first say in where you kind of draw the line. Um, and I'm definitely of the school of thought of being intolerant only of intolerance, which isn't the paradox it sounds like. And um, I just feel like uh, we, we do need a forum for that kind of debate, but I don't think people should be allowed to publicly like damn this group or the other, especially if they're in a position of power. And I think that's kind of the problem. There's no real demarcation of those with power and those without. Yeah. So you get, you know, polit politicians echoing just random groups of idiots for the sake of trying to win their favour. Yeah. One of the, perhaps the main... Perhaps the... Oh, you can go. Come on, I come... Yeah, go, yeah. Perhaps the best... I agree with you, but perhaps the best example I can give of what... of the thing I'm describing is that there's a thing that happens now at universities where a lot of universities, particularly in America, where if anyone... Um, slightly on the right or conservative comes in to do a lecture, the student union bans them and they get, it's called no platforming. Right. And um, I think that uh, my central point was is that even if you disagree with them, you shouldn't no platform them because the best way to shut down someone's opinions if you disagree with them is to actually debate them. Okay. And to no yeah. platform them makes you seem intolerant. Yeah. And like a lot of these people on the far right have very successfully painted this image of, the, of people on the left being these whingy SJWs, yeah. don't want anyone to say anything that they disagree SJWs. with. SJWs? Social justice warrior, that's what it means. Okay. But okay. yeah, I, that's what I meant. I do agree with what you yeah. said before. Okay, so we need to give we need to give right-wing people a platform just so that we can have the argument, a proper argument with them, rather than shutting them down. It's be that, worse. yeah, be that, be that in a, you know, how we react to their offensive comments, or it, the more kind of articulate ones that actually come in and give a talk. Um, we, sh yeah, um, yep. 
But I think even then there's a bit of a problem because it's putting them on equal status. So like around Brexit time, for example, Farage was given a disproportionate amount of airtime for the people who, uh, whose views he represented. And I think maybe it should be in line more with uh, proportions than just, you know, someone. There's, you get but one person on the left, one person on the right, because that's not how a lot of issues are, are sort of like split. Um, I mean, how do you how do you work out what? The yeah, I'm not pretending it's kind of easy. It's an, like most things. It's an ongoing social dialogue, I think. Um, yeah. And yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. That there, there does need to be something, but I don't think it's. Uh, and I'm not just saying you were saying it was equal weighting, but because I'm sure there aren't like as many you know uh, right wing fundamentalist speakers going around the university circuit as there are left wingers. Let's not kid ourselves. But. I do worry that sometimes people think they should give a platform to someone with controversial views to seem open, whereas really they're just allowing are intolerance. They, they're sort of exaggerating and exacerbating yeah. a minority view. Have to be a bit careful. Yeah. I do. I, I kind of. I, I totally. I, I think we probably are agreeing, but maybe uh, it's, it's a thing about semantics, just figuring out yeah. where the proportions I mean, lie and the that, representation. I mean, it's one thing to sort of like open up a debate where you're actually engaging a section of society that has got ideas that you don't have but where you sort of go I guess to the extremes and find the most extreme person with the most extreme free view speech, and bring them in. Free speech is definitely paradoxical and dangerous because I think it is fundamentally important but um, of course you are correct that, that that does freedom of speech opens up freedom to be abhorrent and all kinds of other things yeah. but I do but going back to what we were talking about earlier with the internet with anti-terror laws um, you know, uh, you know, when people are saying that we should ban extremist groups, you know, it's quite a dangerous step to start deeming certain things to extremism because yeah. any anything could be deemed to be an extremist. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm I'm a socialist. A lot of people consider me to be an extremist. What's your most extreme view? Do you think I want to nationalise railways? A lot of people would consider <laughs> yeah. me to be an extremist. Okay. No, but it's, this yeah. is the danger, though, is that dogma is subjective. So therefore, yeah. Um, all kinds of things could be deemed to be extremism, so it's very dangerous to, the, to start um, overseeing freedom of speech in science, saying certain things are unsayable, because it's a slippery yeah. slope, because anything could be said to be that. Yeah, I think he's absolutely right there, and I, I think that there's a difference between uh, respecting people's views and discussing them, and um, giving a platform for propaganda, yeah. and I think that there's been a great deal of propaganda bandied about in a way that has has basically lied to the general public and yet no one is being held to account right no one is How? anyone can say anything and no one is held to account okay should you be held to account for what you say you're certainly not on Tokyoki you're not held to account here come back come back come back uh, this is Tokyoki it's a free form talk show we talk about whatever you want to talk about right now we're kind of talking about talking and about oh come and have a seat come and sit down it sounded, it sounded philosophical it, well it kind of I mean in, you know like from my point of view everything's philosophical yeah. um, but you know there you go yeah. um, we've got Katrina we've got Toby we've got Pat we've got Rowan over here what's your name Andy and Mel Mel welcome uh, my name's Mikey at the moment we're sort of talking about it all started off with Richard Hammond trying to make a joke he's trying to be funny and he said oh I don't want that ice cream because I'm too straight and that led to this whole conversation about what do we do when people and that's not particularly offensive at all and it you know it's just a late it's just lame I think um, uh, well, I've said that myself not anyone else anyway um, um, the I'm supposed to be neutral in the middle, you see. Anyway, the point is, um, yeah, it can take a little bit of size. But anyway, the point is, then we started talking about, okay, what about, have we been shutting down people with different views to ourselves, people with potentially offensive views? Have we been doing it in the wrong way? And then that, suddenly they feel like a sort of victimized minority that need to sort of, you know, have more of a platform. Should we be, apparently in, in universities now, they're actually denying platforms to people that are a bit more right wing. Yeah. Is that the right thing? Should we actually be debating with them? Or, as Rowan says, are we then giving them too much of a platform? So that's what we're talking about now, is that how do we sort of embrace but not exaggerate these kind of other views? Have we been doing it in the right way? You know, there's been a lot of, people have talked about fake news and all this kind of stuff. There's been a lot of that going about. How do we deal with all that stuff? Do we talk about it or do we just ignore it? So that's where we are right now. Um, so it is a bit philosophical. Earlier on we were talking about all getting naked, but you missed that. <laughs> um, 
Oh, so, yeah. Definitely yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that's where we are right now, yeah. Okay. So, you know, as and when you want to say something, please do, just, you know, yep. I, I do agree with free speech, and I agree with the freedom of the press, but it's very difficult because if they're only representing the views of one group, is that really free speech? Yeah. Is it free speech when one person kind of decides, has got this massive mouthpiece, and then other people have just got this microphone? Yeah. This is what I, I'm quite a big fan in a weird way, even though I'm a bit of a journalist, of about the decline of print media. Because even though I probably agree with a lot of some of what the, comes out of the left wing um, press, like Guardian and Independent and so on, when they disappear, you, you will more likely to have independent journalists with independent opinions and less kind of like a voice that uh, yeah. kind of like encompasses the, the, the just objective reporting of many. And I quite like that idea that you wouldn't align to a paper, you start to align to people. So you think um, so that having independent journalists? Journalists kind just of. doing you, their thing. By yeah, you, you get this like peer. To, there'll be some kind of like emergent peer-to-peer -peer network rather than someone like my, you know my dad going out to buy the right-wing paper every morning and yeah. what it, paper it'll be is less. That? Uh, it, usually the Times, but so he's uh. one, of the, one of the problems that I've we were talking about this this morning with the Independent is that because yeah. the journalistic market has become infinitely more competitive, the more competitive a market comes becomes the the quality of the product becomes degraded, and we were looking at the Independent this morning. The Independent used to be a very kind of highbrow, left-wing broadsheet newspaper in this country. And if you look at the Independent now, it's like clickbait articles about sex. Yeah. It's like because um, the print media has been so destroyed by the yeah. competition, of the internet, they're almost becoming like a, a vice kind yeah. of thing. So actually, there's two different ways you could go. Like the internet creates all of these avenues for creative thinking and so on, but it's so competitive. Everyone's just wanting to, you know, like, you'll never guess what happened when yeah. this disgusting thing happens. It becomes more popular, yeah. more yeah. populist, less yeah. institutionalised, yeah. you know. So there's two ways. Yeah. So, basically, I'm a journalist and I'm a you're phony. A, because you're a what? A phony. I thought you said I'm you were a massive a liar because... Yeah. When I want to tell the truth about something, it doesn't always fit because the PR, like basically, I'm, yeah, I'm only getting these free gigs because the PRs want me to say nice things. So I can't actually be critical about music in the way I'd like to be right. for the okay. publication I write for because of the so fear you're of actually upsetting distorting PRs. the truth in order for, for in order to actually progress and survive your career. I've written pieces and get got them sent back from the editor saying uh, it's going to upset the PR. Okay, so, so so I'm literally lying so you're all the time, <laughs> okay. just to get free stuff. It's like, okay. it's like you were saying how 80 80 percent of band reviews in the enemy are four stars. Yeah. Like the enemy used to be famous for like like one of the things I used they to like about the enemy was saying with their stars. this is fucking shit. One star. I quite like. Yeah that element of journalism, but now, because of the whole PR medium, it's just been sanitised and it's all, I can say something nice about my band or my PR. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I am also a reviewer and uh, I, I won't actually go into it as a job because I can't really say what I want. So what I do now is, I just don't ever review bands that I don't like, I just actually review, I refuse to actually if right I can't anything. say something nice and they won't let me, they expect me to lie, I won't, I just won't say anything. Okay. Because I've got that choice because I'm not kind of getting paid. Okay. And really, if they don't yeah. like it. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Any points over here? But we've got a, a sort of returning face here. This is Leo, I should say. He wasn't there. Is it Mel and Andy, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Um, um, anyway, we're talking about journalism. Are we, you know, is this kind of like degrade, degradation, let's say, of conventional print media leading to, uh, you know, this kind of wonderfully distributed individual viewpoint, or is it leading to people just lying about stuff to get free things? That is where we are right now, Katrina. One of the best reviews I've ever read, well, I didn't read it, because there's nothing to read, yeah. is Pitchfork gave a band uh, zero yeah. <laughs> stars. Yeah. And um, there was no words, it was just a YouTube link of a monkey drinking its own piss. <laughs> <laughs> I could never do something that funny because, yeah. like, it's just not loud. Yeah. <laughs> but that was, like, the 90s, and that's why journalism was quite interesting then. Yeah. And, like, I don't know, if you told me that when I was younger, I probably would just not want to be a journalist now. <laughs> okay. Did you video? Yeah, did you? Did it use a cup? 
Did, Did he use he, a cup? Yeah. No, he's literally just a monkey pissing into its own mouth. Well, it, that's quite a quite a feat to be to be able to do that. Yeah. It's quite a flexible monkey then, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Slight tangent. Uh, that's what we need. I, I that's feel. right. Um, yeah. I would say that there is a great significance in zines. Hang on a second. I want to get a final thought, Leo. Uh, let me get a final thought from final these thought. guys. Do you want to get a final thought? Um, I haven't got one. Do you, we've do you, we've got mean, to go. Do you, do yeah. you actually read? Do you? What, do you um, yeah. We, thank you. Um, it is a very Yeah, do you know, I, I do have something to say about what you're saying. Because I think that, the, what, I mean, you've got to remember, I think, with the papers, is that they are individual companies. And they've got a right to express things how they want. You know, and, and they employ an editor to, to make those decisions for them. And, however, there is some uh, amount of dissipation uh, in as much as they're using, you know, Twitter quotes and whatever. You know, so when they're doing their, you know, they're studying for the, the, the piece that they're writing, you know, they're, they're looking at that as well. Which kind of, certainly when you're looking at those papers like the Independent or, or the Times or where you expect better things than, say, the Daily Star, then that kind of waters it down a touch, says I. And we live in a world where we can just express, you know, we can all express our, our displeasure at, at our own kind uh, through social media. Yeah. A little bit like when you're, you know, uh, you're in a car and you want to say, well, you're a shit driver. And you have, well, in fact, you are saying it, but you're in your own little yeah. bubble. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. No yeah. one can hear it, but on social media, you're stepping slightly outside of that. Yeah. So it's kind of expressing it. Other people can see it, but there's still almost a degree of anonymity, yeah. except for the people that are in your little group. If you know what I'm saying. Yeah, no, I mean, I think yeah. that there's the road rage idea that, in a, in a way, there's a kind of element of road rage which is, um, you know, in a way, it's that you're expressing anger no one hears apart from those in the car with you. Give us a final thought before you go. What, what's uh, that? Thank you. thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. We're here all day, so do come back if you've got anything to say. Yeah. We're going off to watch a band now. What are you going to yeah. see? Uh, who are? Mark McGuire. He made me cry last night. I oh, really? Yeah. And that's is that a good thing or a bad yeah, thing? Yeah, he played here. It was so good. Yeah. Just crying so much. Okay. I'll come back later. I really okay. enjoyed it. Thank you. I mean, there's so many uh, different thoughts and ideas. It, yeah, maybe we should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to have a go in a minute? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, go on. Yeah, go. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll give you the microphone.